I'm going I'm going to go ahead and get started. Thank you everyone so much for being here on behalf of Harvard Pilgrim Healthcare and Tufts Health Plan. I'm excited to be here for our topic today, Food for Thought, Superfoods to Boost Memory, Mood, and Mental Functioning. I'm Trisha, your registered dietitian for the next half hour that we have together. I'm also a yoga and fitness instructor. I'm a wellness coach and love to talk about food and help people with their food and nutrition. So let's move along. And by the way, if you have questions, put them in the chat. I'll look at them as we go along and I will, we have a lot of information today. So work with those questions as we move along. And then at the end, um, I'll answer some then. I'm happy to stay on a little longer if you have lots of questions. Okay, so for the superfoods to work, we need to have a good baseline diet. So if you hear in the news, flax is great for you. Well, it is, but if you're eating donuts and cookies and ice cream and, you're, and you sprinkle a superfood like flax or leucoma, we'll talk about leucoma in a little bit. If you sprinkle those on top, you're probably not going to get much benefit. We need to have a really good overall baseline diet, a good balanced diet. And that's where I put up a picture of the plate that I developed to help people see what a good balanced diet looks like. And I put this together after looking at various icons for good eating, like the um, Mediterranean pyramid, the Okinawan pyramid, the Harvard School of Public Health plate. I even looked at the Tufts Older Adults for Americans plate, and that's a great plate too and the Canadian plate, USDA plate, and put them all together to come up with this plate. So if you're not doing this already, can you get more vegetables in? Try to get them at least lunch and dinner. Try to make half your plate vegetables. Try to get both raw and cooked. And we're going to go into specifics in just a little bit for protein, a quarter of your plate protein, a quarter carb-rich foods like whole grains, also potatoes, not French fries or potato chips. Those are kind of once in a while foods. Um, but the core should be healthy foods closest to the ground. If we can think of food, excuse me, foods in their more natural state. Okay. And then for your protein rich foods, Greek yogurt, chicken, turkey, beans, fish. And then we want to try to get in fruit each day, uh, three fruits, a day would be ideal and try to vary the colors of the fruit, the types of fruit, just like vary within each food group, the types and the colors of the different fruits and vegetables, and then the types of the different protein rich foods and carb rich foods. Then we want to get healthy fats in, in our diet. Now there are superfoods within these groups that are helpful for mood, memory, and mental functioning. So I'm going to highlight some of those as we move along today, but just know that more research needs to be done on all of them. And we may hear of a study over the next week on a food that can be awesome for our health that let's already be eating that fruit or vegetable because research comes up all the time on different fruits and vegetables. The key is just to be eating them daily for sure. Let me stop, stop sharing for a moment, invite you into my kitchen. Hello there. And just point out some things that I think will be really helpful for you. Okay. So for your protein, fish is a brain food. We're going to get to that in a little more detail in a little bit. Just know about eight ounces over the course of the week. Okay. Then we want to be thinking of things like Greek yogurt. One of the things that's sneaky about yogurt is that you'll find that companies often will add sugar and for optimal brain functioning, we want to decrease the sugar. Now, this by far is not the worst thing to be eating in your diet, but if you can get something like this that has no added sugar, that would be a better bet. Let me just show you. So in the label, it says seven, bring that. So if we look at the sugars, you'll see uh, seven grams of added. It may appear backwards, but seven grams added. It's the added sugar that, I, that I'm concerned with. 
not the the lactose in there. Some of you may be lactose um, intolerant, and then of course we're we're concerned. But it's the added sugar. It's what they're dumping in. You take the added sugar grams, divide by four to get teaspoons, and round it up to eight to make it easy. Eight divided by four is two. And look what I have here: two teaspoons of sugar. That I mean, it actually spreads out to be quite a bit. And if we have this one. There's no added sugar. And then you can add some peanut butter in there to give it some healthy fat. And wow, that's really super yummy. So even in some of the healthier foods, just look at your labels because sugar tends to be added to a lot of products. And we can just add fresh fruit to this and it can taste even better. And let's say you still want a little bit of sweetener. You can put in a half a teaspoon or one teaspoon of honey or maple syrup and now you're using half of the added sugar that they put in, in here. All right, let's move along, give you some other ideas. Ithaca hummus is a great way to help get in more vegetables and you're getting beans in with the, with the hummus. I like that brand, super tasty, doesn't have any junky additives or preservatives. And it's in a lot of the supermarkets that are out there. So that is a fun product. Okay, now, for your other sources of protein, besides the fish, beans in your diet, um, chicken, turkey, um, when you buy beans, I like this 365 brand at Whole Foods, no salt added, that's great to look for. And then let's talk about some examples of healthy fats, extra virgin olive oil. I really like the California ones. They're local, they're super yummy, very high quality. Look for the California seal. See there, it's like a little picture of California. And that means they're committing to a higher level of quality. I like that one, California Olive Ranch. But here's a little secret to save you some money. Whole Foods has a cheap 365 brand. And I get there a lot. We go through a lot of olive oil. I make a lot of dressings in my family. And um, this is their 100% Californian olive oil, extra virgin, and it's their cheaper brand, the 365. And it tastes good. My kids will eat it. So a little money-saving tip right there. Then, of course, avocado, great way to get in healthy fat. And then nuts and seeds in general. We'll talk more about them as we move along today. And then for your whole grains, very important for um, turning food into energy, also important for for your um, brain functioning. One way is through the vitamin E that's in the um, germ of the whole grain. And then you have lots of fiber in the bran and the germ. Companies strip that away when they make products with the white starchy stuff that doesn't have a lot of nutrients. And they make things like crackers and pretzels and bagels and pastry and cake. Um, so we, and not that you can't have those things. We just, we want to limit those and choose healthy whole foods, um, for most of what we're, what we're eating. So whole grain means the three pieces are intact and have been ground up to make a product like whole grain pasta and brown rice, millet, Farro and look at the, that's a nice whole grain farro you can get on Amazon. Look at those grains there. It's chewy and nutty, really delicious if you haven't tried that yet. And then things like whole wheat pasta. Look for the keyword whole on the ingredient list. And look for whole grain in your breads as well. And oatmeal is another whole grain. Okay. And then remember, variety of fruits and vegetables. I'm going to share again. It looks like there is a question. Um, are the slides going to be shared? Um, I'm going to put up my email at the end. And if you'd like the slides, I can email them to you. And let me go ahead and share. Give me one moment here. Okay. Let's move along. And again, just put questions in the chat or in the Q&A, and I will get to them as we move along or at the end. So fruits and vegetables, super important because they may benefit your brain by reducing oxidation and inflammation. 
oxidation is a process by which your cells can get damaged by these compounds called free radicals. And they arise from pollution, too much sun, chemicals, and overeating. So scientists feel like when uh, they have studied that when we eat, we generate free radicals, but when we overeat, uh, the theory is that we're generating more and they can damage your cells. When we eat healthy foods, they have antioxidants in them that stop the damage. And then inflammation sets the stage for heart disease, cancer, and diabetes. So we want to eat anti-inflammatory foods and fruits and vegetables in general are anti-inflammatory. They may reduce the damage that leads to Alzheimer's. They can improve brain cell repair and functionality. They can improve your blood flow, which is fantastic. And they can improve insulin sensitivity. And sometimes people feel like when they get diabetes, they can't eat fruit, but you can have fruit with a meal. And if you're really worried, make sure your meal has protein and healthy fat present, and that can help to dull the effect of the blood sugar from, from rising. So having balanced meals really is key. All right, let's move along and talk about one of the superfoods that some of you are already eating. I love this because I saw it. You put it in the chat. So that's great. Blueberries may increase short-term memory. They may reduce the effects of Alzheimer's and dementia. They contain these compounds called anthocyanins, and they have anti-inflammatory, anti-cancer, and heart disease prevention properties. Now, it's not noted up there, but I want to note that blueberries also have anti-adhesion properties. So you all know when you get a, um, a UTI, a urinary tract infection, what happens? Well, that's when you may hear that you can eat cranberries or cranberry juice. I want to tell you that blueberries also have that anti-adhesion factor um, so that it, it helps to it, it helps also to prevent against these infections similarly to cranberries. Now, one of the really amazing things that's been um, studied in research is that blueberries may improve balance and coordination. Can you imagine that? Well, the research was done on rodents, and I have a picture to show. And they fed rodents, some of the rodents, a blueberry enhanced diet, and some did not get the blueberry enhanced diet. And they had to balance on those wheels that you see. The ones that ate the blueberries were able to balance a little longer. Can you imagine that, if that can really help us? So it's really amazing what, what a healthy diet can do, along with exercise too, that includes balance activities like yoga, that can be um, super helpful in addition to a healthy diet. All right, strawberries contain a compound called folate and also vitamin C, and as well as other antioxidants that help prevent cognitive decline and preserve memory. Now, folic acid, a way to remember it is think of the word foliage. And when you think of foliage, you think of leafy greens. So eat more leafy greens like spinach and romaine. Um, folic acid also in whole grains, avocados, broccoli, beans, peas, and bananas. Now, an apple a day, you all know what that does, right? That little rhyme. Well, besides keeping the doctor away, it may help with memory and contribute to healthier lungs. Several years back, I was asked to speak um, at a fire station, and I wanted to figure out what can I share with firefighters that can really benefit them. And I saw that, you know, being that they are exposed on their job to chemicals and smoke, what can I do to help them to maintain and improve lung health? And I started looking at research and I found research that supports that apples may help with lung health. So another reason to eat apples. Three vegetables a day may significantly reduce cognitive um, decline. And that was found in a study that compared those eating the three a day to those eating less than one a day. In that research, it was found that green leafy vegetables were particularly important. What I love about green leafy vegetables like 
kale, spinach, Swiss chard, collard greens, mustard greens. They don't have a lot of calories and they have a lot of nutrients. Even having like, I have a little basil, well, it's actually a big basil plant here on my windowsill and just picking off leaves and adding that to your salad can just add additional nutrition with virtually hardly any calories at all, which is really wonderful. Okay, I'm gonna stop here and just have you think about what's the one thing you can do as a result of being here today? Just one little thing, you're, you're here for half an hour. So as we continue to move along, think about what's one thing that you'll do. Maybe it's increase the spinach because that's associated um, with, or it may increase short-term memory. It's a great source of that folic acid that we spoke about, which can protect against Alzheimer's disease, um, also may protect against depression, cancer, macular degeneration, and stroke. Spinach is a good source of magnesium, which lowers blood pressure, also may be helpful with sleep. And spinach helps build stronger bones due to its vitamin K content. It really is truly a superfood. One of the things I love is that if you get a bag of baby spinach, you can put it in a smoothie. You don't even taste it. It has such a mild flavor. You can have it as a salad. You can put it, put it in a microwave safe bowl, cover it in the microwave three minutes, and now you have cooked spinach. It's really pretty amazing. So easy for people that are busy. For optimal energy throughout the day, we want to decrease the added sugar, junk food, and refined foods. I'm never one to tell you never eat that stuff. It's not realistic, but just try to minimize that in, in your diet. Try to make most of what you eat healthy. The new dietary guidelines say try to make about 85% of what you eat healthy, and then that leaves you a little room to put in some play foods, joy foods, whatever you want to call them. Um, I, sometimes I call them the less than healthy foods, but there is some room for that. But try to make most of what you eat super healthy. Okay, let's move along and let me show you this picture. I want you to clue into that yellow structure. That's the hippocampus because the Journal of Alzheimer's and Dementia found that consumers who frequently drink sugary beverages may have poorer memory, smaller brain volume, and a smaller hippocampus. That's that structure. And that's where memories are formed. So to have awesome brain health, decrease the sugar. But there's one thing you can do to build. We want to build brain volume. One thing you can do, put it in the chat, take a guess. What can you do to build brain volume? So put that in the chat. If you want to take a guess, what can you do to build brain volume? And I will check that momentarily. In the meantime, I'll tell you, Another thing that we want to think about decreasing artificial sweeteners, also the sugar alcohols, artificial sweeteners were found in a study um, to be associated with, with um, uh, stroke and dementia. And they found this uh, by uh, studying people that drink diet soda. Be really careful with diet soda. What's in diet soda? Artificial sweeteners. Now, other studies have found links between artificial sweeteners and cancer. Those are animal studies. And then in human studies, there's been um, some link between artificial sweeteners and, and heart attacks. So we really want to be careful. No one took a guess what we can build our brain volume with? Okay, I'm going to give you a hint. Fitness, moving. So moving can help to increase your brain volume. So let's just another reason to add movement in. And let's see, just see, looks like a few more questions have come up. And yes, so vitamin K, one of the things vitamin K does, and a lot of people don't realize this, it's, an, it's important for healthy bones. So we always hear that calcium and vitamin D, but there's other things that also build healthy bones and vitamin K is one of them, just another reason to eat um, spinach. And then, oh, I see. So someone put the answer fish in what builds good brain volume. And, you know, I love that you put that in there because the omega-3s in fish, which we're going to get to, I mean, um, 
right here, you see fish for better brain function. The omega-3 fats in fish build, they literally make up the structure of your brain cells. They're essential fats that we need that we can't produce on our own. So either we get them from fish or vegetarian sources. Now, eating fish puts you at less risk for Alzheimer's, dementia, an age-related mental decline. Try to get, I mentioned it earlier, eight ounces over the course of the week. In research, countries eating more fish have been found to experience less depression. You want to avoid high mercury-containing fish. That's big-eye tuna, king mackerel, marlin, orange roughy, shark, swordfish, and tilefish. For tuna, get the light tuna. It's a better choice than albacore because albacore is higher in mercury. Now, I mentioned some of these items, but I want to highlight others. The omega-3 fats that are in fish, and I'm going to tell you which vegetarian sources soon, going to keep you in suspense. Um, so not only important for your brain structure, but may decrease dementia and inflammation, may increase serotonin, which is a feel-good chemical, may help treat depression, irritability, may reduce symptoms um, associated with bipolar, attention deficit, and schizophrenia. The fish to eat, salmon, herring, bluefish, lake trout, anchovies, sardines. Know that all seafood has omega-3s, but there's some like these that are higher than others. The vegetarian sources, oh, oh yeah, can't, thank you, G. Russo, thank you. You put in, how about canned sardines? Yes. If you can find them that say low salt, great, or packed in water, great, but sardines are super good for you. And the vegetarian sources of omega threes, um, walnut oil, um, extra uh, expeller pressed or organic canola oil, flaxseed oil, and then flax seeds, walnuts, hemp, pumpkin seeds, chia seeds, and soy foods. And then eggs contain a compound called choline, which is important for memory. It's an essential nutrient in the yolk. It's also in cauliflower, iceberg lettuce, peanuts, sunflower seeds, and soy, but much higher in eggs. The eggs also may contain omega-3s if the chickens were fed flax or soy in their feed. And I recommend eggs on an individual basis because they don't raise the cholesterol for everyone, but for some people they do. Now, soy also contains that choline and the omega-3, so it is a superfood, has isoflavones that may improve memory by, by protecting your nerve cells. And where can we get soy? Well, edamame is soybeans. We can eat tofu, um, have roasted soy nuts, soy nut butter, and soy milk. And I showed you the whole grains before. The B vitamins are important for mental functioning. They turn your food into energy. They help to turn your food into energy. And by having whole grains, as opposed to their white counterparts like white bread and white pasta, the whole grains have a more stable effect on your blood sugar. And we have just a few more minutes. So if you have those questions, put them in the chat or the Q&A. There are some foods that may help to calm you. Now, Dr. Judith Wortman um, out of MIT found that when you consume 25 to 35 grams of carbohydrates, basically alone without too much protein or, or um, fat with that, it may help to boost serotonin. Now, if you're if you have diabetes or pre-diabetes, this would be one of the strategies probably not to try, but about an uh, you know, an hour before before bed, or if you're feeling like you're anxious and you're looking for a snack that may help you to feel calmer, then you may want to do one of the strategies. So I'll give you an example. I have some listed there. Um, but if you look at this oatmeal in a half cup of dry, there are 27 grams of carbohydrate. Okay, so that would fit into fit into this 25 to 35 grams. So just something to know about. Now, protein is interesting because that can help with alertness. I have uh, one of the amino acids in protein is tyrosine, and that's associated with more alertness. So make sure at lunchtime we have a protein source at, at our meal. Also at all meals, it's great to have protein there. 
Protein has a compound that eventually turns into serotonin, that feel good chemical. So we, do, we, it's another reason to make sure we eat a balanced diet and get enough protein in. Nuts are a good source of vitamin E, which helps protect against cognitive decline. So it's great to get a variety of different kinds of nuts in. They also help to prevent against heart disease. Here are some up and coming superfoods, lucuma. I like to put lucuma in my smoothie. It's a superfood fruit known for enhancing mood and concentration. You can find it in, um, in our country. You find it in powders um, native to Brazil and South America. Matcha um, is uh, native to Japan, and it's a superfood tea. It's basically ground up tea leaves, and it may enhance mood and concentration. It has a high amount of beta carotene also in your yellow and orange fruits and vegetables, and that may help to slow cognitive decline. And then if you like acai bowls, Acai is a superfood berry known for enhancing memory, and it helps to prevent. It may help to prevent against age-related decline in mental functioning. And you can find that in the frozen area of your supermarket. I also found it in powdered form with a couple of other superfoods too. I think it's an acai goji berry, and I think it was a blueberry powder mix that I found that I thought was just fun to experiment with and um, put in my smoothies. And also I make energy balls and I roll them in superfoods to give it like a fun coating. So that's another way to use them. A couple more things before we wrap up and I take the remainder of your questions. Eating breakfast may help you to boost energy, your memory, reaction times may support more creative thinking. It gives speed and efficiency in solving problems. Studies have been done on kids that found it can boost math scores, um, may help with recall and accuracy, thinking and concentration. You do want to avoid a high fat, like a huge breakfast that may feel you make you feel more sluggish. So, you know, going to McDonald's for one of those big fatty sausage, egg, biscuit kind of meals. We're not talking about that. We're talking about the meal I mentioned earlier, oatmeal blueberries, peanut butter, Greek yogurt, like that's a nice one, a smoothie for breakfast, great. You know, the, the, your own eggs that you make with the whole grain avocado toast, that would be a nice option. Okay, so one of the last things I wanna mention is that if you have difficulty regulating your sugars and insulin, this is something that we wanna work with your doctor and dietitian to help get under control. Um, because these issues, uh, along with diabetes, prediabetes, it, they can um, decrease cognitive function over time. So you want to work on strategies to keep your blood sugar under control. And I've seen people who get control of their food and they move more. It can really make a difference. So movement is really key because we talked a lot about nutrition today, but the movement helps you to circulate your blood and helps you to um, get energized. So we wanna move as well as eating really healthy. All right, so don't forget to eat the rainbow. There's my email, Trisha at trishasilverman.com. Whoops, sorry about that. If you're looking for the handout, I'm going to check the chat, see if you have any more questions. I don't think, oh, yep. Let's see, a couple more questions came in the chat. Oh, love these questions. So Erin, thank you for mentioning fermented foods. So fermented foods like kimchi, which is fermented cabbage, um, tempeh, which is a fermented soy food, and kefir, which is a fermented yogurt drink, and kombucha, which, which is a, a, a fermented beverage. So your intestines really love fermented foods um, and fermented foods provide bacteria to your intestines. And what we, so fermented foods act as a probiotic and yogurt has um, bacteria in it. So it's a great addition for your intestines. And then when you eat fiber, it helps to feed the good bacteria in your intestines. When we have good bacteria and when we feed that good bacteria via fiber, fruits, veggies, whole grains, beans, nuts, and seeds, we make our bacteria in our intestines thrive. And they're like employees that work for us. And they make 90 
to 95% of your serotonin is made via your gut, your intestines. So for optimal intestinal health, we want a great microbiome that refers to the good bacteria and their genes. So to make those bacteria thrive and to make your intestines act like an engine that works for you, producing um, serotonin that makes you feel good, we want to eat fiber, fruits, vegetables, whole grains, beans, nuts, and seeds. And fermented foods are a great way to boost your and support your intestinal health. Now, what? so question about what do I think of protein powders? So I think that they can be a nice addition to your diet. I prefer that you try to get most of your uh, protein from real whole foods, but I have a protein powder I'm going to show you here. Um, so that's, and I'm going to stop sharing so you can see better into my kitchen, but see my email there, Trisha, trishasilverman.com, and I can send you the handout and let me stop sharing. You can see better. So here I have, here we go. Here I have an organic pea protein. When you get protein powder, the reason I like organic is that where is the protein powder coming from? It has, it's dried up. So you want to make sure that it's a good source and that it's handled well. Otherwise, there can be harsh chemicals used in drying um, the, the product out in extracting the, the protein from, whether it's coming from a bean or, or a seed or uh, somewhere else. It, you know, if you're getting a, you know, getting it from milk, for example, the, you know, a casein or a whey um, based powder. So pea protein and hemp are vegetarian powders. I like it if you can go organic. I think that they're, they're nice to have around so you can put them into a smoothie if you like. In my smoothies, I vary my proteins. I might use tofu. I might use Greek yogurt. I might use a hemp or a pea protein powder. So that's really up to you, but just try to get a high quality powder if you're doing powders. And try not to make most of your diet powders and bars. We want to move away from that and be eating real food. That's what gives you energy, vitality, and longevity. Okay. Other questions, it, put them in the chat in the um, or in the Q&A. And let's see if we have any other ones. Any healthy oats that, that I recommend is the question. I make a lot of overnight oats. So here's my, my spiel on oats. All oats are good. That being said, steel cut oats would be your highest quality. Um, what I find for making overnight oats, I like old fashions. And this happens to be nature's path. They have it at Target. They have it at other supermarkets. Uh, I've seen it go on sale at Target, Whole Foods, um, Stop and Shop. What I like about um, nature's path, it's organic. Over the last couple of years, I've seen that oats may be higher in pesticides. Now, if you're just eating like white bread and hot dogs and cake, just get any oats, right? But if you're looking for like that next step and what to do next, then maybe go organic. So I don't think we have to go all organic to, to be healthy. Um, I think a perfect world, everything we grow would be organic, but it's not, we have to pay attention to our budgets. So just old fashioned oats um, are great in overnight oatmeal. So I love that question. And I'm glad you're making over, overnight oats. Um, to make overnight oats, you put them in a in a mason jar with whatever liquid, like uh, soy milk or a dairy milk or an almond milk. I like to put pecans, chia seeds, and by the way, it's like a um, a one to one ratio with the oats and the liquid. So one fourth cup of oats, one fourth cup of your liquid, and then I like pecans, frozen or fresh blueberries, chia seeds. Make it fun. Sometimes I'll put yogurt in there as well. And then you shake that up and it um, it becomes a really nice consistency overnight while it's sitting in your fridge. And by the way, it doesn't take that long. You can just do it a few hours before you need it. Okay, so I don't see any other questions. I'm going to double check in the chat. And I am going, oh, it looks like one more might have come in. Oh, thank you. So someone put in a great, G Russo put in a very helpful comment that Trader Joe's steel cut oats are really good. Thank you for sharing that. Love these comments. I learned from all of you as well. And then in 
the Q and A. I don't think there are any other questions, but I'm checking. No other questions. I want to thank you all for the time that you spend here today. And then I'm going to ask you again that you think of one thing that you could do for your health as, as a result of being here today. One little thing. Hey, if you could do everything, that would be spectacular. But it's really fantastic if you could do one thing. All right. Thank you, everyone. I hope to see you again. And thank you so much on behalf of Tufts and Harvard Pilgrim Healthcare. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye.